Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and I've been a supporter of Ashen ever since Warlords or General Beta. But sometimes it's hard getting it done when the lead sucks, let's be honest. You have to have a good lead in order to make Ashen work. So today, from my personal experience, ever since the beta up to patch 6.2, I've been leading Ashen groups from time to time, just casually. But I want to give you guys some strats that I've used myself in order to make these leads happen, to win events, to win leader fights, to win middle fights, to win just about everything. And it's not even game related, it's more like psychological. It's more like really learning how to talk to the players, lead them, and also how to psychologically counter the other team. That's all it is, is psyching the other team out. So let's get to it. So, first one is, be vocal and tap often. Most people are in Ashen, and they're just waiting for directions. There's a lot of capable people, I mean, you get like, I think right now the groups are locked down to 20 or so, or average and 20 in Ashen, but there's plenty of capable people, and they're willing to do anything somebody tells them, or what a leader tells them, and it's uh, hit or miss. So maybe your lead will be right, maybe your call will be wrong, but whether it's right or wrong, You'll be able, if, as long as you give them directions, then they have something to follow. And you're not going to get anything done if nobody follows directions. So just be vocal, because most of the people are just waiting there for directions. Strat number two. If you're going to push up, then really push up on them. What I mean by that is physically take your character, stand where the horde member is standing, or alliance, whatever the opposite faction you have. Stand where the enemy is standing, literally on the same hitbox. If the whole group does this, Everybody gets freaked out because they're like, whoa, they're literally pushing up on us. Whoa, I'm a back up. It's really psychs the other team out and psychologically they're like, I don't like this whole aggro situation we got over here. I'm just going to back up uh, to a safer area. And as they're backing up, they're losing a point. Too many people back out and then you just start killing them off as they're getting psyched out. Then the whole team starts falling apart. It's part of the psychological battle. So you have to get the whole group that you are leading to do this. So this takes some time to, in order to convince everybody that this works, but once they see it happen, and once, you know, it starts rolling, it's a lot of fun just to watch the other team, as they just get literally getting pushed out of areas, just losing back to back to back. Strat number three, also plays on psychology of people. Reinforce entrances with mounts and numbers of people. Get the biggest mounts you can, get as many people at the entrances when you're, you know, about to do an event and you're waiting for it. This way, when people come over there and they see that there's such a huge number of people and such a large force, meaning, meaning large amounts, they will not want to contest it half the time. Psychologically, people will be like, whoa, that looks scary, I don't want to deal with it. And it's hilarious when it works, because they can have bigger numbers. You just look bigger, you look like you have more people. And it's, again, very, very funny if it actually works out. You have like 20 horde run by, like, whoa, there's, I know there's only 5 alliance at the entrance, but they're all look huge and they look like there's a bunch of them. And it's like, whoa, we're not dealing with that, let's just go find a road, and like, yeah, we got this event, and we can come back and do the road. And you literally just fool the other team. Number four, lead takes the charge. As a leader, you have to be the first one in there. Even if you're a caster, you have to be the first person going in. Because if everybody sees you going in, getting ballsy, they will want to do the same thing. Monkey see, monkey do kind of deal. If you have to tank the boss, go ahead and tank the boss. Pop some defenses, be the first one in there. Because nobody else knows what to do except the leader. And if you look confident in your actions as a character, everybody's going to follow you. Stay composed and confident, faint it if you have to. You have to be the coolest guy in this Ashron in order to lead it. How else are you going to convince other people that you're the best for this if you can't convince yourself? You have to be confident at everything you do and you can't let anybody bother you or anything bother you even if you make a bad call as long as you have a quick and cool recovery nobody's gonna mind it because so far you're leading all the great have the time in leading it could be all about bad calls but as long as you have the confidence and you're like yeah man we got this ain't no problem nothing bothers me you're trolling me i don't even i'm not even i'm not even gonna acknowledge it doesn't bother me whatsoever you gotta be the you gotta be the fonzie yeah, because how else are you gonna convince everybody else you do the best at leading this, and you're the be your call is the best if you can't convince yourself. So faint it if you have to. Number six, uh, say only what is needed to be said, no flavor text except during pushes. The only time you should add a flavor text is do a slash yell and be like, CHARGE! 
for the alliance, destroy, wreck these kids or something, you know, and then everybody's just getting inspired and they run after you as they see that, you know, the yell text above your head so they can see exactly where you're at, who to follow, like those things are kind of cool and people get inspired for it, but for the most part when given directions, just tell them where to go, where to be, keep it short and keep it understood as, you know, as, as short as possible, as constrained as possible, just so people can get the gist of what you're supposed to be doing, where they should be, where they should be going. And as long as it's simple directions, they'll most of the time follow you because they'll be like, oh, this guy can put it in simple terms. I can understand this. You know, it's uh, very relatable and it's, it's very easy to do. Just keep it, keep it simple. Number seven, let your team know what you're doing right and wrong through examples. This is something I've learned. You can't be saying, oh my God, you guys are a bunch of shitbags. As much as I want to say that to a team that's just doing terrible, uh, you can't do that. You have to be showing them examples. Okay. You guys are doing this, that was awesome. You guys did this, that wasn't as good. So you gotta use examples in order to show them, yeah, do more of this, less of that. This is the best way to get everybody to figure out, oh, okay, so we should push up onto people, like physically move our characters, even if we are casters. Okay, yeah, that's fine, we could do that. Oh, so we shouldn't uh, start backing out as soon as we see any of the horde, we should just stand together? Yeah, okay, we, we can do that. Examples are the easiest way to do it because people just did these things, and through examples they can be like, okay, do more of this, less of that. I can get the idea, I can get the point across. Number eight, don't rage even if going gets tough. Again, as much as I would want to be the first guy to rage at everybody, even I know in Ashland there's just no way of doing it. You just cannot possibly let yourself rage. Not at this moment when everything is crucial and you know everything is counting on you. So don't rage ever in Ashland. Otherwise, people are just going to get discouraged and you're just going to lose members. Number nine, sometimes you'll have to repeat yourself. So repeat yourself if needed. If you tell people go to AOA, type in go to AOA. Nobody's going, type in go to AOA. Everybody to AOA, need to go to AOA. It's okay to repeat yourself because people will see the repetitive message and they'll finally get over there if needed. And again, that all works as long as you follow the top steps, uh, the other steps mentioned uh, you know, earlier. So repeating yourself is completely fine. Do it if you have to because some people just need the repetition. Number 10, pick up items for team fights like the prison wand. That one's simple. It's just those items help out a lot. You can trap a bunch of 40s or lines in an area and it just helps out your team fight. So you need to be the guy with some of the items. If you can't pick up items for like the stampede or the central ghost of breath, do it. Or if you can get somebody to pick it up and you call it out. Having these items definitely helps in team fights. That's just extra. So this is really it on how to lead Ashran. It's kind of a longer video, but there is a couple of strats you should follow if you want to win. So that's really it guys. Hopefully you enjoy your Ashran and if you are one of those people that just having trouble, you know, with all the leads, now you know what it takes to take up the reins. And the leading itself is not that hard. It's just uh, if you get cooperation with everybody, then it kind of all fits together. If you don't get cooperation, that is literally you can do about it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Dalar and hopefully you enjoy an Ashran 6.2. And I'll see you guys in the next video.